Now you may be seated for good. Hello, how are we doing? Good. Let's see if we have a quorum. Roll call, please. He is here. 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 Beautiful. Quorum is present. Uh, well, let's move uh, quickly to a happy occasion. Nancy McPhee. Good morning. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, um, thank you for allowing us time to recognize members of the Florida Superior Small Lodging Association. It's a statewide organization with over 125 members. And we're happy to announce that we have 14 members here in Lee County. Um, members of Superior Small Lodging subject themselves to unannounced inspections. And they have to complete the inspection with 82% to become a member. So we're very proud of our 14 members. Today, we're specifically interested in recognizing the 10 members in Lee County who achieved the White Glove Award. And to get the White Glove Award, you need to have passed the housekeeping portion of the inspection with a perfect score of 100%. So while I have 10 um, that achieved that, I'm not sure all of them are here. I'm going to just run down the list. And if you're here, we would invite you to come up to get your plaque. Tam, Commissioner, would you like to? You'll be up for the next portion anyway. So if you'd like to join me now. <laughs> the first property right down in downtown Fort Myers is Legacy, Legacy Harbor Hotel and Suites. Come on up. <laughs> Thank you. The second property from Pine Island, the Tarpon Lodge. <laughs> Also from Pine Island, I'm not sure she made it, Jenny from the Two Fish Inn. <laughs> Fort Myers Beach, we had four properties achieve the White Glove, the Beach Shell Inn, Gulf Breeze Condos, Manatee Bay Inn, and the Silver Sands Villas. <laughs> On Sanibel, we had Mitchell Sandcastles, Shalimar Cottages, and the Waterside Inn, I believe, is here. Jason? Thank you very much. SSL has now changed its criteria, and properties with 75 units are now invited to participate. So we hope to see more of you participate next year. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yay. <laughs> I know you think that TDCs are, TDC meetings are getting more popular, but there's an awful lot of CGSP folks in the room. <laughs> Super exciting. I'm not sure how to get to my presentation, though. Is she? Because I just hit something that left a mark there, which is really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, so it's okay. Just a slight technical difficulty. Okay, so while we're waiting, why don't I just, in case there's anybody in this room that doesn't know about the program, um, the VCB's Guest First program with seven modules um, and actually an eighth that has just been started on Bridging Generations that we're super excited about. Um, but the program, the combination between the Guest First has actually allowed the American Hotel Lodging Educational Institute um, to, once they've gone through Guest First, they're eligible to take the exam to get their CGSP, Certified Guest Service Professional. So we are so thrilled, and I want to remind everybody, there is no other destination marketing organization anywhere that has partnered with them 
able to achieve this. And with today's graduates, we will be at 389 graduates in the county. And I'm kind of thinking once we reach 1,000, that we could be dubbed the friendliest destination in the world. <laughs> Not that I'm in control of that, but I think that that's where we should go. Self-dub. Yeah. <laughs> we are self up. We're just kind of crowning ourselves. So I think we're getting there any second now. <laughs> but if... I'm not putting pressure on you at all. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Liz Linares up to be by my side. Thank you. Um, um, I think everybody knows Liz. Liz is now um, handling four of the eight sessions, soon to be five of the eight sessions. She has done an amazing job over the last, what, year and nine months, and I'm so incredibly proud. Um, and she has agreed with Twisted Arm to read the names off today for me. Yeah. yeah. And if I may, it is also her birthday. Oh. <laughs> do you happy birthday to, are we allowed to do this? Happy birthday, dear Liz. Happy birthday. <laughs> She does have a list. She does have a list. So if you, okay. Um, as we call up all the names, you will see that they're separated by properties so and the locations and other businesses, because now we've extended beyond that. So we'll be reading them off by property. As the folks come up, they'll receive their certificate and their pen, and of course, get a handshake and a congratulatory one of her. So it's one of those ceremonies, short and sweet to the point, but. Again, you guys have dedicated so much time and effort, and I, I thank you for your participation and engagement because the classes were tons of fun here recently. So we're very, very pleased to be able to do this. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So we have the certificates, and while they're going to get Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> thank you so much for my birthday song. Um, okay, so let's get started. Valentine Design, Susan Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> Barrier Island Park Society, Sharon McKenzie. I don't know which way we're going, but we're going to go this way. All right. Captain Bubby's Island Tours, Bubby Howell and Paula Shatera. City of Sanibel, Sherry Enright, Mary Barbara Gentry, Renee Matt Mayhew, excuse me, Sabine Schroeder, and Linda Short. <laughs> Courtyard by Marriott, Gulf Coast Town Center, Chris Crystal Martins. Denny's Marketplace Restaurant, Dion Gamble. <laughs> Diamond Head Beach Resort, Yvonne Ellerby. <laughs> Drip Castle Management, Christine Harrower. <laughs> Edison <laughs> Winner States, Emily Farah. Emb Embassy Suites, Estero, Jennifer Ferringer. <laughs> Fishtail Marina, Janine Pulaski. <laughs> Harborside Events Center, Patricia Shallon. <laughs> Homewood Suites, Bell Tower, Brittany Bellamy and Christine Pat. Island Vacations of Sanibel and Captiva, Kelly Loden, Peters, and Beth Rizzo. <laughs> Lonnie Kai Island Resort, Marianne Crawl. <laughs> Lee County Port Authority, Valerie Grant.
Lee County Tax Collector, Kathy Silverthorne. <coughs> Lee County VCB, <laughs> Daniel Benson, Pam Brown, Aaron Congregan, who is on business, Sharnice Jarman, James Lewin, Jackie Rodriguez, Juliana Silva, who's already here, Beverly Morris, Rick Morris, Peggy Ochagross, and Linda Rossi. Legends Country Club, Kelly Leonard. Paradise Coast Consulting, Aaron White. Sanibel Island Vacations, Amy Skolmich. Seashells of Sanibel, Katie Kelborn. Sunstream Hotels and Resorts, Courtney Alby and Lindsay Tomlinson. <laughs> Southwest Florida Creative, Martin Pankey. <laughs> the Gasparilla Inn, Diane Radazzo. <laughs> and Windward Hello. Passage Resort, Jamie Bentley. <laughs> Congratulations. so much. <laughs> 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 Okay, back to serious stuff. <laughs> Anybody read the meetings that feel secure about making a motion to have them approved? Second. <laughs> I have a motion, I have a second. Is there a discussion on that motion? Is there an objection? They are hereby approved. Okay. Members of the public would like to step forward and be heard on any subject dear to your heart. Any members of the public? Well, we're losing most of them. <laughs> okay, municipalities. I know Sam is here. But. Oh, oh, Stalik, come on. The public, we're back to the public. Sorry. Is this where I am? You need to stand on a box back there. I would have caught you quicker. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> All right. You know I'm going to invite VLC. I'm on the way out anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. John, I'll get you a response on that, but I'm not re uh, prepared to uh, right this minute. But uh, my my knowledge of that project is that it was something everybody wanted and been talked about for a long time, and I didn't think of it as controversial, but I'll find out the answer to your questions. Okay. Well, you're, you're a giant of a man. Thanks for being with us here this morning. <laughs> Other members of the public that I may have missed for any reasons or no good reason. No, okay, now can we have Santa Bell? <laughs> We're glad you guys are back. Can you 
Ms. Zamamra, for the record. Judy and Mary Wayne, I just want to say, and I know I speak for everybody here, how much we value the partnership with Sanibel. Uh, you guys are always way out in front uh, and on behalf of the welfare of the entire county and the TDC. You guys are special partners and we appreciate you all the time. And thanks for coming month after month when you're not required to. Other municipalities would like to say a word or two here. I don't see any, so that moves us to the next special presentation regarding the Randall Research Station. Cindy Bear, you go up there while I say something nice about her. Right. <laughs> I, I met Cindy 20 years ago, thereabouts, uh, when she was involved with the Nature Center. Uh, and uh, what an environmental leader she has always been. Uh, she, he, she worked with the Rotary Club of Fort Myers with the committee chairman, uh, who was in charge of the City of Palms annual uh, celebration, and they would uh, recommit themselves to planting palms and taking down the dead ones and doing other good things. And my father was the chairman of that committee, and he was in love with that lady. I never told my, 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 wife, my mother about that, but Cindy has contributed in so many ways to uh, the health and welfare of our beautiful area, and we are pleased to have her here this morning, whether the equipment works or not. All right, well, thank you so much for having me, council members. Um, I'm currently now the coordinator of programs and services out at the Randall Research Center. 
Uh, we are a self-funding program of the Florida Museum of Natural History, which is at the University of Florida. Um, this year, we're celebrating 20 years. So actually, we met longer ago than 20 years. <laughs> and uh, 20 years of research, scholarship, teaching, land management, and public outreach at Pineland, uh, where an archaeological record dates to 50 AD and documents the site of the second largest town of the Calusa people at the time of European contact. We are located on Pine Island, on the shallow mangrove-fringed estuary of Pine Island Sound. Um, many people know us simply as the place with the Indian shell mounds, or the place to walk the Calusa Heritage Trail. <laughs> Don and Pat Randell met in New York City in the 1920s. They retired to Pineland in 1968, moving Pat back to her beloved native Florida. They bought 20 acres first, then later more. And by 1974, Don Randell was quoted as saying, I don't dig in the mounds. I hope to have a professional do that someday. Pat had an interest in conservation too. Her father, Philip Crandon, was a civic leader in Dade County and largely responsible for the preservation of Crandon Park, a lovely beachfront now surrounded by Miami. <laughs> and, excuse me, by 1983, see the clipping up there? <laughs> then Florida Senator Frank Mann accompanied Don Randell and archaeologist Dr. Bill Marquardt of the Florida Museum of Natural History to Jocelyn Island, which Don had purchased intending to develop it. Instead, that visit inspired action to preserve the island and to conduct research and preserve additional archaeological sites in the area. Excavation at Don and Pat's Pineland property actually began in 1988 and were followed by the collaborative Year of the Indian projects in 1990 through 92, all demonstrating the unique, far-reaching, scientific, and internationally historic significance of the site and in 1994, Don and Pat gifted more than 53 acres to the University of Florida Foundation. By 1996, the Randall Research Center was operational. The earliest years emphasized visitor access development, creation of an interpretive trail, acquisition of a headquarters building, and more land followed by digging out from Hurricane Charlie <laughs> in 2004. A reforestation project was completed in 2007 as archaeological research continued and visitors were welcomed. Today we are nearly 70 protected acres and utilize three buildings. The Ruby Gill House, which houses our office and lab and accommodates visiting scholars. The Pineland Post Office and the Calusa Heritage Trails Visitor Center with its classroom and gift store. The Ruby Gill House was built in 1922, and Ruby became postmaster at Pineland in 1925 with the ultimate walk-to-work job managing the post office next door. <laughs> <laughs> Both buildings are local landmarks and a scenic part of Pineland Road as it winds to the waterfront and the Calusa Heritage Trail. The visitor center is the starting place for school field trips and tourists alike. We host over 800 school children a year, mostly fourth graders, and teach adult-focused courses such as the coastal and upland modules of the Florida Nas Master Naturalist Program. Simultaneously, the Calusa Heritage Trail is an important draw for tourists and residents. Perhaps you're already aware that in 2010, the State of Florida Division of Historic Resources reported that 46.7% of U.S. residents who took a vacation in Florida participated in some history-based activity during their stay and spent over $4 billion visiting historic sites. Our trail is open sunup to sundown every day. We staff the visitor center Monday to Saturday. We offer guided tours and seasons three days a week, twice each of those days. We host diverse private groups on tours. Each Tuesday in season, we partner with Captiva Cruises and the Tarpon Lodge for an eco-heritage tour featuring a boat trip, lunch, and a walking tour of the trail. One visitor gave a special shout out to our proximity to the Tarpon Lodge right across the street, <laughs> noting in her trip advisor review that in addition to being a lovely place, we offered a chance to walk off all the calories she had consumed. <laughs> we share the TDC and VCB goals of offering opportunities for visitors to reap higher order benefits. 
If you have visited, you can attest that the ambiance of the site encourages visitors to nurture their whole being and their relationships. Each year, our numbers increase. Last year, uh, the folks signing our guest book, they held from 151 Florida cities, 48 states, and 16 foreign countries. What those visitors learned has the potential to promote behaviors that lead to better stewardship of our environment. That is, as they learn about the role a healthy estuary played in the lives of the Calusa, the critical role that it played in the Calusa becoming a powerful culture, which endured very well in southwest Florida for centuries, those visitors come to a better understanding of the value of the environment in their own time. Sometime about a thousand years ago, Calusa people at Pineland began burying their dead in a sand mound around which was excavated a canal linked to other water features, including their two and a half mile canal that crossed Pine Island. In 1885, it was described as 35 feet high with a diameter of 300 feet. Artist Merrill Clark's drawing from our interpretive sign at the base of the mound is both a depiction of the mound and an interpretation of Calusa religious beliefs as transcribed here by Spanish priests in the 15 and 1600s. The five acre parcel holding this mound and a midden mound known as Low Mound, which dates to 300 AD, sat outside our fences until $200,000 in private funds were made available for their purchase in 2015. About 1916, the western portion of the sand burial mound was taken down by a property owner. At least half the volume of the burial mound was removed and the dirt used to fill low areas. At that mound flank is where today's Calusa Heritage Trail terminates at a fence, right where that little yellow triangle <coughs> is. See it sort of to the right near the cross-hatched parcel which was purchased. An arts and attractions operating grant we received in 2012, operating grant we received <laughs> in 2012, funded the elevated walkway conveying visitors to that point. The remaining portion of that mound was actually slated for destruction in 1926, but it was halted by John Smith, a local resident. Residents and local legends say that he sat on top of the mound with his shotgun to prevent its destruction. <laughs> no doubt. Agricultural activities took place on the parcel surface, looting occurred, and in the 1990s, salvage and repair archaeological work was completed and results were published. In 2004, the parcel was impacted by Hurricane Charlie. Invasive plants took hold and then dominated. This is a view from our fence where Brazilian pepper completely obscured the south and eastern flanks of the burial mound. Crews recently worked for nearly two weeks to carefully clear exotics on the site, giving due care to its cultural significance and preserving native plant species when possible. Look to the right and see this water right here. That's an intact portion of the waterway that Calusa excavated about 1,000 around that burial mound. And there you can see more of that waterway and the slope of that barrel mound rising up. Regardless of one's own views of life and death, there's no doubt that this area was one of significance to a people anchored to a place they literally did fight to retain. We're grateful to the Felburn Foundation and the support of our members who provided the funding to undertake this intensive restoration work. This view is from a little further away. That's the, there's that canal right here and the, water, the mound rising up. And that photo emphasizes the native oak trees that are in recovery. <laughs> We're watching for regrowth from a dormant seed bank and have already located many kuti plants, a prized um, cycad, along with beautyberry and ferns and, alas, some exotic plants too. We're committed to continuing care for this parcel that we refer to as the sacred precinct. And in a year or so, we will extend the self-guided trail into the area. We have funds from the Florida Humanities Council for the creation and installation of interpretive signs. The text is drafted 
and it will undergo assessment this fall. Artist Merrill Clark is at work ruminating about artwork, <laughs> and we will open the area to the first public tours in March at Calusa Heritage Day. Calusa Heritage Day will take place on March 25th, by putting it on their calendars, <laughs> March 25th, 2017. And as at past events, we will host classroom exhibits, a speaker's tent with a lineup, including that artist, Merrill Clark, Dr. Bill Marquardt of the Florida Museum of Natural History, plus Torben Wick of the Smithsonian Institution, and Rachel Candice of the Florida Public Archaeology Network. There'll be harbor boat tours, food, artist vendors, and more. I hope that uh, you all might attend. In closing, we'd like to acknowledge the importance of the support of the TDC and the VCB to our operations during these two decades and before. We have assisted us in many ways with outreach worldwide. Your volunteers at the airport are lovely ambassadors on our behalf. The Lonely Planet Guide shows up in people's hands at the trail, and we appreciate all you do and more, and we look forward to another 20 years, and with your support and encouragement, we'll continue to teach, learn, and preserve. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Cindy. Uh, a little P.S. I was privileged to know uh, Colonel Randell and his lovely wife, Pat, and was in a position to work as the go-between with the state of Florida uh, as he was l working to turn that priceless jewel over to the state for, uh, for management and set up and uh, the way it's run today. If y'all haven't seen it, uh, we talk about tourism, we know about all these places, but it's a jewel and you can stay at Rob's place right next door <laughs> Uh, while you're enjoying those nature trails and the, uh, the fantastic history that uh, that it presents there. So, Cindy, thank you again for all you've done for your whole life around here to make this even a, a better, more exciting, interesting place. Well, now, the fun part starts again. Tamara, back to you. Yes, sir. Hi, Fran. Good to have you. Let's start with the uh, bed tax report. As we did not have a meeting in September, I'm giving you two months in this report. So for July, bed tax collection was up 12.2%, came in at 2.7 million. August, a little bit more of a challenge, uh, came in 1.6 million, down 2.9%. For the year, uh, we in the, in the August collection period, up 5.1% uh, at 38 million. I will add that that now exceeds last year's collection, so we are on track for, you know, we have achieved another record setting uh, bed tax collection year um, with one month of the fiscal year remaining. In terms of the STAR report, um, you will see that occupancy, ADR, and REVPAR all up in July. Uh, occupancy up 6.7%. Uh, rate up 4.5% for a combination of a 11.5% increase in REVPAR. In terms of August, a slight dip in occupancy down 1.1%, ADR up 1.8%, and the REVPAR up 0.8%. In terms of the airport traffic, a slight dip in July, a little bit bigger dip in August. 484,000 passengers in, a lot in July, 431, almost 432,000 in August. And for the year, uh, traffic at the airport also was up, uh, ending August up 3.7% for the year. We are going to, uh, in light of time and all of our presentation this morning, we're, we're going to go ahead and skip over the sales report, the visitor services report, and the communications report. But I'd like to invite Brian up to introduce our uh, both second and third quarter resident artist. Well, good morning, everybody. Everybody hear me okay? So uh, one of the goals of the VCB was to expand our photo library, and we really tackled that um, full steam ahead this, this fiscal year. We did that in three ways. One of the ways was we ran a photo contest and uh, had several thousand submissions. 
Another way we did that was, uh, or is currently, through uh, some special software that we have um, that helps us find photos that are taken in our destination and secure user-generated photos from the destination. It's very cool. And the third way is through our resident artist program. That's where we um, invite a photographer, a videographer, to partner with the VCB for a three-month period and uh, through their own creativity, their own style, take photos or videos uh, around the destination. And then after the end, at the end of three months, we review them and we make our selections. So a lot of you will remember Jamie Williams was our first resident artist uh, for Q1. And um, I'm going to introduce you today uh, to our resident artist, Dennis Gingrich, from the second quarter and third quarter. We like Dennis so much, we asked him to come back. Um, he's a resident, lived here since 86. He loves nature, has made a hobby out of photographing landscapes, birds, flower, uh, flowers, and wildlife. He's won a lot of awards. We first met uh, De Dennis when he actually finished second place overall in our photo contest. He works with the city of Cape Coral um, with photos that are used in ads. Uh, and he also has a line of greeting cards and prints at several gift shops in the market. Born and raised near Salem, he and his wife Linda love to travel anywhere in the world any chance they get. Uh, he has a BA in social work and Bible and a Master of Divinity graduate degree, founding pastor of Cape Christian, a contemporary church here in Cape Coral. And he's been the lead chaplain for the Cape Coral Police Department since 96 and is very active on several non profit boards in our community. So I'd like to introduce everybody today, the VCB's newest friend and resident artist, Dennis Gingrich. <laughs> so I've asked Dennis just to tell, uh, tell you a little bit about his experience with the VCB, about his photography, and uh, I will run some photos that uh, he has taken there in the background for you to uh, enjoy. Thank you, Brian. It uh, truly is an honor. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here today, and it's an honor for me to be selected to uh, serve as a resident artist for the past two quarters. Uh, as Brian uh, mentioned, over three decades ago, my wife uh, Linda and I, um, Linda's here with me, uh, we moved here with our three ch children to Lee County uh, to carry out our life mission, and uh, that is to inspire transformational living in others. And it was through primarily starting a church in Cape Coral. And as Cape Christian uh, grew over the years, uh, in the last three decades, um, it's been one of my de-stressing things to do. Time to get away, time to get out, enjoy the beauty of Southwest Florida. So I've done that often, developing my hobby of photography, uh, especially over the last 10 years, because it refreshes me, it recharges me. It's the thing that keeps me going. Uh, when, uh, uh, you know, life, I give a lot, it's an opportunity to get back from our community. Uh, late last year, it was a friend, actually, and a member of my church uh, suggested I apply for the resident artist program. He had seen it somewhere, sent me the uh, uh, link to the application, and so I thought, well, I always love an adventure. I love challenge. And I can tell you uh, that serving as a resident artist the past six months has been both adventuresome and challenging. Uh, the tagline for my photography uh, business card it has been inspiring transformational living through the lens. And uh, the resident artist has, uh, program has allowed me to actually live out that tagline because really that's a way of life for me and it's how I approach my photography, it's how I approach this project as well. I wanted every image to inspire a viewer to drop their jaw maybe or to um, yearn to visit the location or aspire to maybe to get to know the people in the photo or to simply thank their creator for such exquisite beauty. And when I look through my lens, what I try to do is to create a photo that will be awe-inspiring, it'll be life-giving, it'll be hope-filling, and it will be God-pointing. And uh, I hope that these photos, the last two uh, quarters, uh, we'll point a lot of people to potential, uh, for potential guests from all over the world to the beauty that Lee County actually has to offer here. Uh, I really can't thank the VCB staff enough. Brian, uh, Elizabeth, Stephanie, uh, various ones have been uh, phenomenal to work with. They've given me ideas. They've allowed me to uh, 
uh, be creative, they critiqued me, they uh, encouraged me along the way, and, and I can't say enough about the tourism vendors uh, that I've had contact, contact with. They've been wonderfully enthusiastic and cooperative and generous. I mean, they've given me permission to their properties, they've given me entry passes, they've donated paddle boards and kayaks and jet skis and boat rides and tour guides and strangers and friends alike have given their time to be my models, uh, to take me out on their boats, to spend a morning or an evening on the water or on the beach or wherever while enjoying the beauty of Southwest Florida. And most of all, I want to say thanks to the love of my life, my wife back over here, 42 years. Uh, Linda has encouraged me. She's enjoyed uh, many of the photo shoots with me while getting, uh, sometimes sh she was my assistant. She got model releases signed. She coached a few models in some cases, actually was the model in a couple of cases. She drove jet ski while I shot photos. She. Uh, powered and guided our kayak as I sat and photographed uh, stand-up paddle boarders and uh, gave up many evening hours with me and most of my days off for the last six months as I went through and processed nearly 10,000 images that I shot over the last six months. So she offered to oftentimes helped me select and uh, determine which ones to delete and to get them all down to just the few hundred that I actually submitted to uh, Brian and Elizabeth and their team for review and selection. So I want to thank Linda. She's always been an integral part of uh, uh, my success uh, as a pastor and as a photographer. You need to give her a hand. That's what you need to do. <laughs> and again, uh, thanks for the foresight, the vision of this, uh, of this uh, council and the uh, L uh, LCVCB. Uh, to establish the Resident Artist Program, I highly uh, encourage you to continue it on into the future. I think it's a wonderful thing. God bless you, and thanks for the privilege of sharing these uh, photos and uh, this time with you. And we're going to end with one of our favorites. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. So the Resident Artist Program will continue. We, uh, the VCB has made its uh, fourth quarter selection. A uh, gentleman uh, who's lived in Fort Myers for 20 years. He's a photographer, a videographer by the name of Rob Huvis. Uh, will be our fourth quarter uh, resident artist. Uh, the program has been great. Uh, we've got a lot of good new images to share, uh, to promote with. And uh, it's exciting to be able to see uh, all the different uh, perspectives that the different artists take of the destination. So. Um, anyway, if anybody has any questions, I'm available. Uh, if not, I'll let the, turn the meeting back over to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Dennis. As you can see, you know, uh, we're seeing things maybe we, we didn't do before or it, versions of things we didn't have before. So it's really been a fantastic way for us to really grow uh, our uh, content. Uh, you'll see these images used uh, in ads. You'll see them used in uh, our website. Uh, lots and lots and lots of places and uh, I think uh, it's it's been a lot of fun also for us to get to know the artists and appreciate their perspective on the community so thank you Dennis and, and Jamie and now uh, on to the, the fourth quarter um, before we move on I just you know publicly want to issue a big thank you to the Visitor and Convention Bureau staff for Island Hopper Songwriter Fest um, we skipped over the report, so you didn't really hear much about that. You will as we go forward. We'll be sharing more of those results and such with you. But, um, you know, a, a ton of energy, time, um, manpower, blood, sweat, tears, um, coordination, uh, uh, bagging, um, everything you can imagine goes into pulling that event off. It's a fantastic event. So proud that we deliver it to the community. A big thank you, of course, to our partner in that, iHeart. Uh, media and uh, BMI, um, we couldn't do it without them, but uh, this team uh, that works for you is very proud to do so in that event, they take a great deal of pride in. So um, on behalf of uh, me, I just want to say thank you to them here publicly. With that, I will turn things over to Jeff, sir. Great report. 
Uh, Jeff Milkey, <coughs> try to overcome your shyness and speak to us here this morning. Hello. Working. Yeah, we're, we're it's working. Oh, Hello. Good. You have to say word. This is all this uh, new technology here. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, good morning, Jeff Milkey with the uh, Lee County Sports Development Office. Uh, We've changed up our presentation a little bit to match the Visitor and Convention Bureau and make it a little bit, uh, a bit more cohesive. So um, uh, in the packet, you're going to see our typical month-long report listing each individual event. Uh, but on these PowerPoint presentations, typically because those reports were so hard to read, uh, we're just going to try to do um, some highlights. So uh, we're going to go to June. Um, Mark Weber, patience. Uh, there will be a photo of, uh, of Hammond Stadium in just a moment. Um, okay, so June highlights. Uh, hotel room night sold 17, almost 18,000. Um, total sports visitors about the same, which means that if we're putting four people in a room, um, that means that in, on average our uh, hotel, uh, our day stay per tournament in June was about four. Um, so uh, direct visitor spending of $7.4 million. Uh, most of that was perfect game. They had 12 events with us in June, uh, including their national showcase, which again is nationally televised. Uh, it's the top 300 um, seniors in high school, and this is, for all intents and purposes, is, the, uh, is their scouting combine uh, for Major League Baseball. So to have it in our community, uh, to have uh, MLB and um, Fox Sports 1 televising out of JetBlue Park for about six days was pretty cool. Um, then a new event we had I thought I'd mention was the um, Thunderdome CrossFit. We are starting to really look for some indoor spaces for this CrossFit product. It's very popular. Um, and it is bringing a lot of people from out of town um, to participate in these events. Um, here's the trend line. Um, you know, you'll remember last year we had talked about moving uh, some of our July events into June to make room for the series, which is that younger um, age baseball product. So um, we moved a lot of those back into July where they belonged. And so you'll see that uh, our, our June was right there where 2012 and 14 were almost exactly. So now we go to our July activity. Um, uh, first, I'll just say this was uh, a, the, a historic month for us. We've never, ever hit this number in a month, um, 40,000 room nights. This is more than we did in an entire year uh, in, in, 20, uh, in 2003 when we started. So we're doing more in one month now than we did when, when the department was created. Um, Sports tours and visitors, 31,000. That means that the stay is longer. You know, July was basically week-long tournaments. This is summer vacation for the parents, um, so that kicks that number up. Direct visitor spending, $18.8 .8 million. Um, comp uh, comprised mostly of the perfect game. We had nine of their, those week-long events um, that we love to see come into our town. Um, the series was really starting to take traction uh, in the month of of July, the series um, generated 3,000 room nights by itself, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the series in August. Uh, UCCSA Girls Fast Pitch States, uh, we hosted the Girls States A's, B's, and C's in Lee County this year, did a regional partnership with Collier County, and uh, it turned out to be really well. That generated almost 4,000 room nights uh, over 4th of July week. And then, of course, you all know about NARCH, North American Roller Hockey Championships. This was our third of a three-year agreement with them. And, uh, and it generated uh, 7,300 room nights. And we're in discussions right now about trying to get them back here in uh, summer of 18 or 19. They're going to go to Toronto next year, so we'll see what happens after that. There's your uh, trend line, again, 40,000 um, being the biggest number we've ever um, had in any month of any year ever. So um, there you go, uh, Mark, uh, Twin Stadium. For August, um, best August we've ever had also. So uh, 6,297 rooms, um, which again pales in comparison to July, but for our August when we're typically at 1,500 or 2,000, um, 6,300 is pretty good. Um, the direct visitor spending 2.2 million. The series continued to happen um, in August, and, and in August we put 4,300 of those 62 were the series. Um, it was the 
14 and under, I, I'm sorry, the 13 and under and the freshman and sophomore age groups for the series. Um, so if you add July and August up for the series, and I think last year we talked about how underwhelming the series was for its first year and how we really were hoping to get it back up and going in, in year two and three. The series generated 7,300 room nights the two months. That's the same size as NARCH. So when you start looking at it in that comparison, even though it was broken into six different age groups, the series in its year two has already become um, the size of NARCH if you add those uh, all the weeks together. And then the Florida State uh, Youth uh, Soccer FPSL is a new event. It's a, it's a premier league kind of thing. Um, very, very competitive. Bring a lot of teams down from Tampa. Um, over from Miami, um, I can tell you um, my eight-year-old daughter competed in it and they lost 12 to zero. So uh, a <laughs> little more competitive than uh, our organization was ready to handle. Uh, there's your trend line for August. So you can clearly see that uh, August uh, in 16 was the best that we've had significantly. And, and if the way the school calendars continue to shake out the way they are, depending on when Florida especially goes back to school uh, in, in August, depending on when the northern schools go back. Um, August, I hope, will stay similar to this just because that, that series product is, is running into, uh, into August. Um, before we go to questions, I did want to mention one really cool event that just wrapped up uh, today. And that was, um, I wish Angel were in the room, he's not. Um, Angel has been working hard on an international, these international initiatives as we've talked about here now for several for almost a year with you guys. Um, uh, so Team Sweden, uh, uh, their national um, softball players came to town about a week ago. It was their pitchers and catchers. Um, there, was, there was eight of them plus their national coach and they were c here to train. And they worked out with Florida Southwestern's girls softball team. Uh, they got uh, some coaching clinics from them. Um, these are the girls that are probably gonna represent Sweden in the 2020 <laughs> Olympic Games. Um, it was so successful. They spent part of their time in St. Pete, part of their time in Lee County. Uh, they were blown away by it, said next year they're going to bring the entire team here for probably an eight to ten day stay, um, train in our community. Finland has already talked about wanting to come down and participate with them. Um, so the strategic planning about international events and tr international training in Lee County is starting to come true. Um, the, the, the European Baseball Softball Confederation has been watching this as well. Um, they consider this a pilot program. So every single day, the, uh, the national, uh, the head coach for Sweden was communicating back um, to the European uh, Softball and Baseball Confederation and talking about how amazing Lee County was. Again, not just because of our facilities, because we have great facilities, but because of the amazing customer service, the amazing amenities and attractions that they had to. They went and did something every single day in our community. Uh, and then they split up into two uh, teams. Uh, four girls went on one side and three girls went on the other and played um, some scrimmage games against Florida Southwestern. And it was a pretty neat culture event where, you know, we have it on a video of it where the girls were teaching uh, Americans how to say different things in Swedish and, and stuff like that. So uh, overwhelming success. Uh, Ludi Adorno with our Parks and Recreation was also just a superstar with them. Uh, spent all of her time um, making sure that they had everything they needed. So this was, this was a pretty, pretty cool thing for us. So uh, with that, any questions? Rob. Yep. Yeah, looking at that uh, CrossFit, and I mean, I think about like CrossFit, Spartan, Ninja Warrior, you know, it seems to be such a growing sort of sport, I guess. Yep. Um, and I assume it probably trends to younger demographics and, and probably a lot of our target market where we would hope to have here. Is there any associations? I mean, where do you go to try to get more of that business from? Is it is it far enough along that there is a an association that's strong enough that you can get and try to put something together on that? There's typically not an association. There's, there's for-profit groups that run it. Spartan guys have their own company. Uh, Red Frog Events have their own company. Uh, competitor group has their own product. Um, what we're finding is there's a lot of grassroots efforts out of Naples and in Fort Myers who are very competitive and they're actually saying, hey, we, we go to these competitions and why don't you let us help bring those competitions to Lee County, which is exactly what we love to do. You know, let's find experts in the, who are competing in the sport, tell them what products are out there that they're going to in the different towns and, then, and let's bring them here. 
Um, we do find those national organizations at a lot of the conferences and shows that we're going to right now. So we met with, um, uh, we met with folks from uh, competitor group and uh, Red Frog events um, when we were at both um, Connect and at our Teams um, conference, and those folks are always looking for places in Florida. And the difference between CrossFit kind of in the endurance running market or the endurance performance market is that CrossFit typically needs an indoor space or a football field or something because they're setting up a, a course. Endurance, the endurance challenges are different and they want a mud bog or they want big open spaces where they can put inflatables or rope courses or dig pits and fill them full of mud. You know, Warrior Dash does that. So we're very familiar with both kinds, the indoor and the out, outdoor needs. And you know, Charlotte County has really started to specialize in, the, in that outdoor one with the, uh, um, all the different mud facilities they have up there and the, uh, the, the, that, those outdoor entertainment areas that they've, that uh, tracks to trails facility and things like that. So, Thanks. You bet. Any other questions? I, I got to meet a few of the guys from uh, NARCH that were down, a few different teams. Um, it was kind of mixed reviews from them. Um, they said they liked being down here at the beaches, but they didn't really get to do a lot of the beaches because of practice and the games. Um, and, and some of them, you know, from a little bit bigger cities, and they were a little bummed about the nightlife, you know, mm -hmm. not being as late or, you know, as right. active, especially midweek. Um, so, I mean, that might be something we might need to, you know, try to... Yeah, well, and that sometimes is, is our international uh, guests issue too, is that the international, uh, especially Europeans, want nightlife. And, um, but we are starting to develop a nightlife product in Lee County, I think, especially if you look at the downtown area uh, and then the Gulf Coast Town Center area, um, you know, especially in close proximity with FGCU. Um, there are some things starting to, to, to evolve. A lot of it depends on their coach. If their coach doesn't want them going out and doing nightlife stuff, so they keep them from finding those places so that the kids can, <laughs> so that the kids can focus on, we'll, we'll on find performance. Them. Yeah. yeah, they certainly do. <laughs> Colleen? I just think we have to say thank you. Thank you to you and your team, Lee County Parks and Rec and the Lee County Sports Authority, because without you guys like starting this, we would not be where we are now. So coming from 40,000 rooms annually, because we were there, to 40,000 room nights in one month, holy cow. So thank you to you guys and, and the support, and because the Inland Hotels, I'm sure, really appreciate everything you do. Well, and, and a lot of the credit goes to uh, our board and our county management leadership that allow, has allowed us to expand what we're doing and continues to make it a priority in the, on, their, uh, on their list of things to, for us to get bigger at. And again, I say at every meeting that the Parks and Rec Department and, uh, and our county is second to none, mm -hmm. second to none. And uh, we would be nothing without um, their facilities and their, uh, their, their labor of love that they do for us every single day. So thank you for your comment. Colleen, very well said. And Jeff, you're, you're too modest in your own contributions there. We all know how hard you work and how good you are at what you do. Let me give you one last chance to uh, uh, say some positive things. I was approached this very week by a uh, TV reporter who had been here before and was recently back in town. I won't say the name or the station, uh, but uh, it was kind of a negative approach to me saying, uh, could we have made a mistake when we built JetBlue Park? Because look at uh, uh, City of Palms Park just sitting there languishing. Would, would you just share with everybody just a thumbnail sketch of all the things going on at, at the City of Palms Park? Well, first and foremost, Florida Southwestern men's and women's baseball and softball is, is set up there their program there. So uh, that is significant in itself. And I'm not sure that that person knew that that, that activity was going on. So, um, that, you know, that's, that's 140 days a year right there that uh, is being used as a, as a top-notch collegiate facility um, recruiting. They use that facility in the summertime for camps. And then we're constantly continuing to program it with uh, Roy Hobbs World Series uses it every day for four weeks. Um, the Perfect Game used it, I don't know how, 40 days this year. Um, just because of the sheer number of, of fields w we needed for them, for all of, the, of their activities. Uh, we had an NAIA baseball conference championship in that facility. So there, there's a lot of activity happening, and we're putting it to good use. Super. I knew that. I just wanted you to brag about it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Any you again. Any further questions of this super guy? Sit down, super guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> New, new business. Uh, 
Ms. Paget, yes, sir. introduce emergency beach and shoreline. We have a request from the City of Cape Coral for $3,750 to help them put some additional sand on Yacht Club Beach. Um, they had some erosion uh, certain, during some of the summer storms, and uh, the goal is to get some sand back on that beach. Uh, they're asking for 50% of it, as, a, as is our process with an emergency erosion request. If you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. It's a pretty simple request. Is it uh, legit? Yes, sir. Yeah. Our lawyer says it fits, and our staff at the senior level is recommending it. Yes, sir. Now, other questions? We we'll move. Second. Okay. Got a motion and a, and a second from this side of the table over here. Is there further discussion on this massive $3,750 request <laughs> from these good people? No, I have a question. Colleen. So where does it come from? Beach and Shoreline. From, from that 1.2 that was left? I'm just, well, it's not confusing about what we're doing. I'm okay with it. I just don't, I well, don't know where it comes from. <laughs> At this point in time, it would come from the Beach and Shoreline Reserve Fund. Technically, you are correct. Because we didn't allocate all the funds for 2017, okay. we went through the process. We, we really just used this year's revenue to pay for it. Okay. But procedurally, it would be a transfer from reserves because it wasn't originally in a budgeted item. Mm -hmm. Which is a similar answer to prior questions. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion, any further questions? Is there objection to this great motion? Showed adopted unanimously. Thank you very much. Now, back to you. We're going to nominate some people yes. in a real nominating procedure. It's not even a nominating yeah. committee that's fixed and all that. It's going to be open and free and fair. It will absolutely be open and free and fair. No fixed elections here. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Nancy McPhee, I'll turn it over to you. So annually, you nominate five members of the TDC to serve on the Events Marketing Subcommittee. They meet twice a year, and we're, we're getting ready to meet to review this past year and propose perhaps changes to criteria for next year. The meeting will be on November 10th, and then in the spring, they spend two weeks reviewing events marketing funding requests. Um, this year, there were 10, and then they meet in April to uh, make recommendations to the full TDC. So I have listed those that served last fiscal year, and I uh, was remiss in listing Bill Wachulis. He did participate in the review um, as a member of the subcommittee. So what we're looking for is nominations for the events marketing subcommittee for the upcoming, for next fiscal year's uh, cycle. Who is interested in serving on that committee? I'll, I'll if we can get five you. volunteers, I bet we'll have the nominations. <laughs> Like to. Renee? I'll nominate Pamela as chair. I'll second that. <laughs> do we do it? Do we nominate the chair as <clears throat> per se? All together is fine. Does, did you accept this Pamela? It's kind of an annual dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pam's <laughs> okay with that. I'm horrified if it didn't happen. Okay, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I, have one I have one nomination and Pam. <laughs> Any other volunteers and nominations? Colleen. Uh, Renee, Mike, and I think Bill probably, I'd, I'd like to nominate Bill. I think he probably would like to serve again. I think he enjoyed it last year, so, um, but we can check with him if that's okay. Bill, unfortunately, was dealing with uh, hurricane-related issues at his property in Daytona and couldn't join you today. Um, if you'd like to go ahead and add him to the list, I mean, if that, if Bill, anybody's. which last name? Watch your list. Oh, oh, our Bill, okay. <laughs> And Colleen, were you willing? Yes, please. Mike said yes. Anybody else? I need I need two more. No, I think you have five. Renee, I'm Colleen, sorry, I Renee, missed. Mike. Renee, you're okay. And Pam is chair. Wait, I missed one. I got no. Pam. I got Bill. I got Colleen. I got Renee. Mike. 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 Big Mike over here. Okay, somebody. I heard him move the nomination. C's all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. you got your file. I yes. love openness and First fairness. This time. was great. And no pressure from anybody. Council information, have you got information for us? There are a couple of items in your packet for your evening uh, reading <laughs> that you might find interesting. Tony, you've been awful quiet. We're on TDC member items. 
I have nothing, just the only thing is that our United Way, local, local United Way kicks off their campaign. I think it's October 26th or something like that. We have the big meeting down here at Harborside. And I encourage all the businesses to try to get a uh, employee campaign together and help out the United Way because it really helps our community. And with a good community, it's always good for tourism. <laughs> good for you for taking your time to mention the United Way. Super. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Rob? Nothing at this time. Thank Brian, you. are you enjoying these meetings? Uh, very much so, yes. <laughs> uh, you, you were kind of quiet this one, the first one. Boy, you were just a chatterbug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, October 27th, Hotel Association will be having their uh, monthly luncheon at the Hilton Garden Inn in, on Summerlin Drive. That's where you put it on the calendar if you can't find it. Super, thanks, Mike. I um, just want to thank staff for everything they do. and. Um, Thank you for inviting me up to the governor's conference again. I had a great time. And uh, other than that, I'm good. Super. Ms. DePasquale. Nothing today. Nothing. Well, you want me to go? I can go. No, out. thank you for your <laughs> willingness to serve on the, our, our committee that we just forced down your throat, whether you wanted it or not. But no, that's, that's Pam. That's Pam. That's she Pam. forced it down. Okay. One round, Ms. Fran. Just my news and notes are coming around. I think Pam still has them. Oh, and, I was waiting uh, for him to stop talking. <laughs> that's okay. That's it. <coughs> Vice Chairman. I have nothing today, sir. Uh, <laughs> just a thank you also for um, being able to attend the Governor's Conference. It was so informational, and I just enjoyed getting to know a lot of you better, and that was wonderful. And kudos to just piggyback on what you said, Tamara, about uh, the Island Hopper Festival. Um, unfortunately, I had two employees who were out, and so I was covering their shifts and couldn't attend some of the extra events, but um, the Fort Myers Beach concerts were extraordinary. Um, we, uh, my businesses were up that weekend. It was just, it, it was just great. People absolutely love, love, love that event. And thank you to everybody who had something to do with it because it's really quite extraordinary. Thank you very much. But Ms. Pant, back to you. I'm good. I just, you know, I, this has just been a great meeting. I love, um, it was so positive and everything's so wonderful and I'm going out to um, Pineland and again because I, I, I can't wait to see what, you know, what's happening out there. And It's just really great to live in paradise and, and recognize it. You know, these are meetings that I look forward to. When across the street things get really depressing, I said, well, there's, there's only three more days in the TDC meeting, and I'll be okay after that. So thank you guys for all you do for our community. We're adjourned. Hey, Have a good one, Pat. Great seeing you. See you later. Yeah. Are you? Yep. Be back in November. Oh, I got to get dug up. Yeah. Look at his boat. He's got the boat. Yeah. I can meet. I can meet.